Today, we're talking about two body chemicals most trauma survivors have felt but haven't been taught, CRH and substance P, emergency chemistry. CRH stands for corticotropin releasing hormone, which is science speak for this is why we stick with initials. CRH is the starter pistol for the HPA axis. It says something's wrong, mobilize. And then there's substance P. The P stands for absolutely nothing. Some unimaginative intern named it and now we're stuck with it. Substance P's job is to amplify pain, which is why I've been calling this one a jerk since the fear circuit map. These two usually run in pairs. If CRH turns the alarm on, substance P turns the volume up. You can have high CRH without substance P, but if substance P is high, CRH is usually right there with it. On the map, they live here, the sympathetic nervous system. It stands for mobilization, urgency, and pressure. And it feeds directly into cortisol and norepinephrine. This is very different from the opioid family, which regulate through the parasympathetic. Four things you might notice if this duo has been prioritized in your system. One, constant internal pressure. Two, chronic pain or pain sensitivity. Thanks a lot, substance P. Three, feeling on edge even when nothing's happening. And four, trouble fully relaxing. That's not weakness. It's a nervous system trained to stay alert. When this alarm stays on too long, the body calls in backup from the opioid family. Dynorphins may numb the pain, ankyphalins may stabilize it, or endorphins override it. Different systems try to cope with the same stress. The issue isn't their existence. It's when the alarm never turns down. Tomorrow, part two, we'll talk about why this system gets stuck and what actually helps soften CRH and substance P without numbing or forcing calm.